the synthesis of p-nitroaniline. Attention, in this synthesis toxic and dangerous chemicals are used. I don't take any responsibility for damage done to persons or property caused by the recreation of this experiment. Only butyl rubber gloves or none at all should be worn while working with fuming nitric acid. For the synthesis, a beaker is attached to a ring stand and cooled with an ice bath. A thermometer is hanging into the beaker to keep track of the temperature. It is best to add only a small amount of water and a large amount of salt at the beginning, which I had done later. The thermometer should be placed as close as possible to the wall of the beaker without touching it. Then 22.5 milliliters of glacial acetic acid are added to the beaker. To this 22.5 grams of acid analyte are added. Then it is mixed a bit with a glass rod. After that 45 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid are added which causes the mixture to heat up a lot. The temperature went high enough so that the thermometer which only works up to 50 degrees C had to be removed to prevent damaging it. Then I added the salt which I hadn't done in the beginning. When the mixture reached 0 degrees C, 9.5 milliliters of fuming nitric acid are added in small portions while stirring continuously. At first I added 0.5 milliliters. The stirring must not be disrupted and it has to be taken care of that the temperature doesn't go higher than 20 degrees C. To be on the safe side I kept it below 10 degrees C. When the fumes have disappeared, the rise of the temperature becomes slower and after that it is left to cool down back to 0 degrees C. The ice bath was also stirred occasionally. When the ice bath had been changed and the salt was added directly, the temperature sank faster, which is why it even went down to minus 4 degrees C. The following reaction takes place. The acid analyte is mainly nitrated at the fourth carbon or para position and four or p-nitro acid analyte are formed. As a side product small amounts of two nitro acid analyte are also formed. When the temperature went down after the last addition it was left to sit for five minutes. Afterwards the ice bath was removed and the beaker was allowed to heat up to room temperature. This reaction can't be performed in a round bottom flask with a stirring bar due to the high viscosity of the mixture. Otherwise a KPG stirrer has to be used. When the mixture has reached room temperature, it is added to a beaker with 225 grams of ice. This causes all of the dissolved compounds to precipitate and prevents it from heating up due to the mixing of the acid with water. I used ice cubes, but crushed ice would be more suitable as it would melt faster. It is then mixed and left to sit until the ice is molten. It would be possible to add the ice to a round bottom flask and add the mixture directly so that it doesn't have to be transferred afterwards. In lots of papers the p nitro acid analyte is washed and recrystallized. I would recommend to leave this step and work with the mixture after the ice is molten because the effort is not needed. It has been left for two days, which is why it had become yellow. This is not a problem, because the reaction which is responsible for this will be used in the next step. Next, the mixture is added to a round bottom flask. My largest flask was too small, so I had to do this step in two batches. 
the flask was filled up to two-thirds of its volume, a steering bar was added and it was connected to a reflux condenser. The oil bath was heated until the water in the mixture began to boil. This happened at a temperature of 110 to 120 degrees C. In this step an acid catalyzed hydrolysis of the amide bond takes place. This causes p-nitroaniline and acetic acid to form. The solution contains sulfuric, acetic and nitric acid which are represented by Hb and can react with the amine to form the ammonium salt. Depending on the acid, the anion can be the bisulfate, nitrate or acetate, while the bisulfate is the most likely due to the strength of the acid. The salt is water soluble. The hydrolysis is finished when all of the solid has dissolved. After cooling down a small amount of a dark brown solid had formed which could not be forced to redissolve by heating. So it was filtered off. The steering bar was covered with a tar-like substance which was insoluble in water. Nevertheless, it could be removed with acetone. The filtrate was made alkaline with 30% sodium hydroxide solution. To the end, the beaker was almost filled up, so 50% sodium hydroxide solution was used. After the addition of the sodium hydroxide solution, the p-nitroaniline and the side products are present as the free base and the sodium salts of the acids are formed. The solution is then left to cool down and cooled further with an ice bath. A large amount of precipitate is formed, which is a mixture of p-nitroaniline, the side products and the salts. The precipitate is then filtered off. Next, the mixture of p-nitroaniline, side products and salts is added to a new beaker. By adding ethanol and heating it to a boil, all of the organic substances are dissolved while the inorganic salts are left over. When the steering was disrupted, more ethanol was added as long as two layers were visible. When all the organic compounds had dissolved, a vacuum filtration was used to separate the hot solution from the salts. What can be seen here is that the organic compounds precipitated within a few seconds in the flask. The flask was then cooled with ice. After cooling, a large amount of precipitate had formed, the solution was then cooled further in a beaker. It was filtered off again and the beaker was washed with some ethanol. After that, the product is recrystallized, whereas a mixture of ethanol and water at a ratio of 1 to 1 proved to be the best. The recrystallization from ethanol didn't help to get large crystals and the yield was quite poor, even when cooling down to 0 degrees C.
By using ethanol and water and cooling to zero degrees C, large needle-shaped crystals were obtained. The crystals were filtered off, added to a large bowl and dried on air for two days. They seem to be dry, but they still contain a lot of solvent, which is removed by drying it at 100 degrees C. Eleven point two grams of p nitroaniline were obtained, which is a yield of forty nine percent. This was the synthesis of p nitroaniline. I hope you enjoyed. Please rate and comment.